Ever had that gut feeling you just knew what your opponent was holding? Well, these players did too, and boy, were they wrong. From misread hands to overconfident calls, we're serving up a royal flush of facepalm moments that'll make you feel like a poker genius by comparison. So grab your chips, settle in, and prepare to witness some of the most epic fails when soul reads lead to disaster at the poker table. Lee with ace jack off suit opening up here with a raise. So calls with fours and we're off to the flop with a slight mathematical advantage. Watch carefully as Lee is already staring into the soul of his opponent. Ooh, a set for so. I love sets. This is going to be the best feeling in all of poker is making a set. Flopping a set, turning a set, slightly sweeter. So checks and Lee bets straight into the trap. So calls and the turn is the inconsequential eight of spades. So check and Lee slows down to checking back. <gasps> Look! Quad quads. Sadly, I don't see Lee going broke on this hand, so I don't think we're going to get hashtag death by quads. Why sadly? What do you got against Lee? I like memes. <laughs> blatant anti-favoritism. I don't want to lose Lee. I want to gain a meme. Sadly, I can't have one without the other. So that's 11-5. To be quite the hero call. Regardless of whether he calls or folds, you have to show quads. You so it has show. to show the pocket show. fours, right? And so has got to be loving every second of this. So often in poker, you're, they're in the tank and you're sweating it and you're like, please yep. fold, please fold, please fold. But in this situation, you're just like, take your time. And we've seen Kaladu So make some very light bets. So normally he is thinking, please fold, please fold. On this occasion, He's not just got it, he has got the stone. He gets it. Gets the hero call. Ah, oh, wow. On the river. And he does show, look at that. Well, he has to. He went to show down your <laughs> But fault. still, he showed it. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is that you were right. What's for Kaladu? Nice hand indeed. Ass. Nice. Best. Pocket eights. And Brendo with a nice little set mining. If you're going to set mine the deuces, let's go. Fours is twice as good. Man, everybody with their small pairs. That's been the uh, the theme of this session. Pocket four is all over the joint. Pocket three is all over the joint. Oh, a little tackle. A little tackle out there. Ace, queen, ten. Everybody misses. Eights, despite three over cards. Still good. Checks around to Aspas, who checks. Turn is a tray ball. Check. How about a checkle from Tekle? Huh? Old, old checkle, Tekle. It did go check, check, check on the flop, yeah? It sure did. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Tekel's maybe letting him off a little bit a little bit easy here, not not trying to turn his uh, gut shot into a uh, semi-bluff. Well, how about now? And I definitely think that you can't go too big on the sizing and get too greedy because yeah. you have to realize that you're up against really weak, weak ranges as played. And so, you know, it just doesn't feel like a spot, especially against two players where the person with one player left to act behind is going to take this as a bluff spot without the straight or, you know, some type of decent two pair combinations at least. Uh, so, you know, 50,000, I, I just, I mean, the eights quickly Ooh, folded. Wow. But wow, wow, the fours do end up calling. I, I don't know, like. <laughs> I do not think that is going to be a profitable call very often. I don't think that. I think if the player in position bet in that Maria, spot, maybe a little bit more likely to fours uh, were beating have some more four, bluffs. Three, two, three, <laughs> seven, three, eight, three. <laughs> Rob.
raise here with Ace King under the gun plus one. Snowman, Seven. num num for Adrian Mateos. Num num. Let's see how this hand plays out between Ju and Mateos. Yeah. 25k. Good flop for oh, eights. Pretty good flop for two eights here. Mm -hmm. Rare to get all three cards be under the board. But the range advantage is still going to be in okay. Ju's favor. And, you know, with that club chip. as well, chip chip. might get some opportunities to barrel and put a lot of pressure on these two eights. But so far, so good for Adrian. He's going to be very comfortable with this texture. Deuce on the turn. Oh man. Jew walking right into it. This is just not gonna work. But it is setting up a sizing of just under pot on the river. You know, Mateo shouldn't really have any fours in his range. Pocket fives probably getting folded a good percentage of the time pre-flop. I see, double board pair. And you with 128,000 behind, as Griffin mentioned. Less than the size of a pot. Jew does not go for it. I think what, the reason why Mateos is thinking about betting is because if I don't think my opponent is going to check aces through tens here, that means it's 25. more likely, and you can see great, great little bet here for about 25, 30%. Yeah. The moment that Zhu checked that river, he handed Mateos the keys to the Lambo. Now he's facing yeah. a bet of 45,000. <laughs> Griffin, you know why we're going to call this hand the French dip? Why? Because it makes you say, oh, Zhu. <laughs> I did that one in the style of Griffin Banger. I was going to say that was a very Griffin line. But it wasn't very fun. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, you guys. got milked by Mateus. Chip hero call. Hero call gone wrong. If it looks like he's trying to get you to call, don't do it. There we have two pretty crappy hands. Buchanan does elect to limp. Also, limp folding if she decides to raise or go all in. She could use this hand as a bluff if she felt inclined. Quite often, Queen X and Jack X offsuits are fine bluffing hands. <laughs> so, pretty good flop for Buchanan. This is a spot where he very often should bet with his whole range, but <laughs> it's definitely tempting to slow play whenever you have just an absolute lock on it. So I certainly don't fault him for checking it back. Lampropolis now drawing dead, but in their own mind, she's not really drawing to anything anyway. Very doubtful that Buchanan will get much more out of this. Well, when he checks back, he probably has a lot of ace highs, queen highs, and nut hands. And if she thinks that she can make him fold ace high, queen high a lot by betting the turn and the river, maybe she should try to bluff. But maybe the jack high also just has enough showdown value. She's reaching for chips. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. She loves the high card call down. Oh no, we're not going to get <laughs> Queen 3 2.0, are we? Oh wow, oh, wow. this is a, <laughs> a great card for it to happen on, too. Just the quads then for Buchanan. Maybe Lamb Proper Loss is going to try and rep a full house here. Or maybe just check Call a Jack High. I just think once bit and twice shy, though, really. I can't imagine that she would call whatever bet is coming in from Buchanan now. Some people enjoy getting bet. She won't <laughs> in a second. <laughs> She's itching to call. I think she may be itching to raise. Oh, no. Those look like calling chips. Okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> it is far from okay. Could you imagine if she goes all in? Oh, my gosh. Well, at least, we, at least we wouldn't have a long dwell-up from Sean Buchanan. All She's right. put 
chips forward and she has called down that bet with Jack High. That is the second hero call that she has made today in a key hand and it's the <coughs> second time she's got it horribly, horribly wrong. Action is on Antonio Sfandiari with King Jack. He is the current chip leader with around 22 players remaining. So this has been folded around to Stieg Top Rasmussen, who's got pocket fives. Isn't Stieg Top the bad guy from Snatch? That was Brick it's his Top. Brick. <laughs> Big brand call. There's a little Imagine bit of a, having a child and calling it Brick. There's a little bit of Stan Beeman about Rasmussen. Yeah, for sure. Up comes Ace of Hearts, Seven of Spades, Seven of Diamonds. Check, check. Action goes check, check on this ace, seven, seven flop. Well, a really quick check behind from Esfandiari. I mean, versus big blind defend, which is fairly wide, he does have some showdown value with the second nut no pair, as I like to call it. Rasmussen's still out in front, but won't much like the board. Especially not when six hits the river. Well, checking back from Esfandiari as well, he can very easily still have pocket eights through pocket kings or some weak ace X that want a pot control flop. So it's not like Rasmussen can just keep firing. He'll like that river, though. You think? he will. I'd say that's the best river for Rasmussen's hand right now, making a full house. And given Esfandiari's check behinds, he won't want to risk that happening a third time. I like the bet. 65,000. Well, you're eight, nine. Or Queen 10. That's narrow. Very specific. I mean, Esfandiari's range here does still have, as we spoke about, 8s, 9s, 10s, Jacks, Queens, Kings. If he thinks his opponent's bluffing sometimes, I guess, call those. Maybe fold the King highs. I just wonder why he thinks the only bluffs are King is, King, is Queen 10. Well, he's making the call. He's getting shown the bad news. It's not Queen Ten. It's a full house. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome poker content and check out this video. The YouTube algorithm seems confident you'll like it.